<laughs> and we're back with Law Society of Kenya President Nelson Harvey, seasoned Professor Herman Manyora, talking about the so-called rift between the judiciary and the executive. Uh, Nelson, let me go to you and ask you this. You have called for the impeachment of the president in what you term as, quote, blatant disobedience of court orders and violation of the Constitution. Tell us, expound, please. Jeff, there is this misconception that Delson Harvey wants to impeach the President of the Republic of Kenya. The quest to impeach the President of the Republic of Kenya is one made by the Law Society of Kenya, a statutory society with a membership of about 17,000 advocates. The decision was made unanimously by elected officials of the Law Society of Kenya on the 11th of May 2020. And this clarity is very important because I've seen comments which are very unfortunate of individuals who have gone as far as saying at this rate Harvey will die before the end of 2020. Mm. And these comments come from individuals we know who work for the state. Some have, given, have even gone as far as claiming that Harvey is making this quest at the behest of uh, the Takatanga movement. That is not the case. This is the position taken by the Law Society of Kenya. And anybody who has a problem with that position should not vent his or her anger against the person or the body of Nelson Harvey. Vent your concern against the Law Society of Kenya. But that is besides the point, because everybody who went to law school could have advised those making this noise that the responsibility of initiating the process of impeaching the President of the Republic of Kenya is the responsibility of the National Assembly. And it's one that is elaborately set out in the Constitution. What we can only do as the Law Society of Kenya is to say, look, there is this transgression on the part of the President of the Republic of Kenya, which if interrogated in accordance with the Constitution, will merit the lodgement of a petition for his removal before the National Assembly. But let me de dwell with matters that are within my forte. The Attorney General of the Republic of Kenya has by a letter written today, directed to the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya, indicated that the failure and or refusal by the President of the Republic of Kenya to swear in the 41 judges is solely based upon his advice. And he proceeds to say further that the President of the Republic of Kenya has told him that he has information, which information can never be shared with anybody and can only reside in the mind of the President. And for that reason, therefore, the Attorney General has, upon receiving instruction from the President, advised the President not to swear in these 41 judges. Clearly, therefore, the Attorney General comes within the ambit of the resolution of the Council of the Law Society, which has directed that we initiate proceedings to remove him as a member of the Law Society of Kenya. And that is what I, as the spokesman of the Law Society of Kenya, is mandated to pursue. And I will pursue it to the very end. And so help me God. Before I go to Herman uh, for his response, real quick, you want to remove the Attorney General, and you've also indicated the Solicitor General from the list of advocates. So they cease being advocates of the High Court. Is that what you're saying? How, how are you going to go about that? Well, before you are appointed an <coughs> Attorney General or a Solicitor General, you must first be an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. The Attorney General, retired Justice Paul Kiara Kariuki, is an advocate of the High Court of Kenya who was admitted in 1978. The Solicitor General, Kennedy Nyabuti Ogeto, is an advocate of the High Court of Kenya who was admitted in 1991. They ascended to those two offices by virtue of being members of the Law Society. The Law Society has elaborate rules, etiquette, there are regulations which determine the manner in which they are supposed to act in the offices in which they were seconded on 
account of the fact that they are advocates. And what we are entitled to, to do under the Law Society of Kenya Act is to deprive them of that membership. And they must be deprived of this membership because they have, they, 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 they have offended the very office that gave them the opportunity of serving as state officers. Okay, let me hold, hold that point. Hold that point, post, Nelson. Thank you for that. I'm, Herman, I'm sure you're just, you're just dying to jump in here. Go ahead. On the impeachment first, your thoughts. Impeachment is a serious issue. It's not something you float around and play around with as if you are talking about taking someone for a cup of tea. That's a very serious issue. And uh, I think you also talk about an impeachment if you have some form of power. In other words, you can have your way. Of course, Harvey says they are suggesting, but there are a lot of better things for the LSK to do than talk about impeachment and talk about uh, the registering the Solicitor General and the Attorney General. Yes, you have the power to remove them from the register of uh, whatever is called advocates. But Kenyans know there are many advocates who have messed, have stolen clients, many, and uh, some of them have even been uh, struck from the register and, uh, of advocates, but they are even in parliament. Why can't Harvey begin by calling those advocates to order, those who have messed and the uh, clients are crying, before you talk about the attorney general? And in any case, it's an exercise in futility because even if you say he's no longer an advocate, according to ULSK, does that make him stop being an, uh, uh, an attorney general? He will not. He will continue being attorney general and solicitor general because it's even debatable that he had to be a, an advocate of the High Court of Kenya to become an attorney general. Supposing he ceases to be, does he also cease to be an attorney general? Is this something is a waste of time, and especially the one of impeachment. I think, as a country, we have... A lot of serious things to talk about. Jeff, if you go to industrial area prison, you will find men who have been there for 20 years awaiting trial. Mm -hmm. If you go to Langata prison, women prison, you'll find women who have been there for many years awaiting trial. And a lot of the problem has to do with advocates. They take on many cases. They seek adjournment after adjournment. So I thought Harvey, as a new broom, a young person, I think well-meaning, he should address himself to issues, I think, which concern the common man and even his own lawyers. Instead of trying to climb a tree that will take him nowhere, you are going to fall from that tree. Are you saying the LSK has bitten off more than it can chew? Of course, of course. These are small fellows trying to talk about impeaching a president. How far will you go with it? <laughs> Nelson, I see you <laughs> laughing there. You're just, <laughs> what, what, what is your response? Look, Jeff, every repressive regime is facilitated by different categories of people. You will find judges who facilitated that regime. You will find advocates who facilitated that regime. You will find scholars. And scholars abound when we talk about this matter. If you look at the 80s and the 90s, there are scholars, among them even uh, professors of law, who supported the manner in which the government was being run. It does not therefore surprise me that we have in front of us somebody who claims to be a professor in fact, I'm told he's a professor of communication, which indicates that he has no knowledge whatsoever in respect of the very serious matters that we, 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 we're dealing with. In fact, Jeff, I must point out that my members take profound umbrage with the fact that you decided to relegate the president of the Law Society of Kenya to discuss such a serious matters with somebody who cannot even understand the mundane issues as to the qualifications of somebody being the attorney general. But anyway, uh, that aside, the point is this. The, the, the Law Society of Kenya is a statutory body. It has a specific mandate. And paramount on, on, on this mandate is the responsibility to assist the government in upholding the rule of law and the administration of justice. Okay. Um, and point noted. This cannot be done unless we have a functional judiciary. And it's incumbent upon us, people of this generation, however small individuals like Professor Manyora may think we are, to ensure that we do this. 
and, and, and let, let me remind Manyora that history is replete with instances where people he considers as young men, boys, have achieved much as compared to this old man that he seems to suggest know what they're doing. No, that is not the position that we need to take as Kenyans. We need to be united. We need to speak in one voice. We need to determine what is the problem that bedevils administration in Kenya, mm. and we need to root out that problem. What and about, her, about to her main point? Bar, Nelson, like the law society her? points out this issue, mm. it's an issue that must be taken seriously. What about Herman's point about all those people in remand, whether it's industrial area or Langata women's, in remand for 10, 20 years because the advocates take on so much, because there are not enough of them, because the cases still keep getting dragged. What about that issue? Uh, 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 Jeff, uh, we have embarked on a serious enterprise here. We have gone to hunt an elephant. Manure is trying to point to us where a rat is, and he wants us to point <laughs> our rifle at a rat. I will not be brought to, <laughs> to, to, to such a degenerate level where I have to address matters of that kind. The fact of the matter is this. As we speak right now, it is the Ministry of Health that has hindered the judiciary from fully opening. And this statement has been made by the Chief Justice himself. And then look at the statement by the Attorney General. He says, instead of concentrating on open up, opening up the court, you are here insulting the President on air. Who is in charge of these prisons? Who is in charge of criminal investigations? Who is in charge of criminal prosecutions? Is it lawyers? Is it the court? So let's confront issues from a panoramic view, a view of knowledge. And the, the, the concern that we must address now is the independence of the judiciary, the rule of law and constitutionalism. And this is fundamental. It's not an issue of politics. Mm. And even if you are to say that it's an issue of politics, the politics of Kenya is founded upon the law. It's founded upon the constitution. Separation of powers, independence and accountability. And unless and until the three arms of government come to the realization that they must work within the confine of the law, we will never develop. We'll have the bickering that you are now subjecting me to from the, this so-called Professor Manyora. Okay. Uh, yes, Jeff. Let, let, let's, let me come in, Jeff. You go in. Go in, yeah. Let me come in, Jeff. Go on. Uh, Harvey is a serious lawyer and uh, is a young man and I respect him a lot. Uh, let's forget about how, what he thinks I am and what he thinks I cannot do and what knowledge I have or I don't have about law or anything like that. Let's just talk about the issues. So you bring out the issues. Let Harvey show that he understands the issues better than me. We came here to talk about the Chief Justice and what he said and how he said it, the implications of that. Uh, let him just discuss that without bothering about who I am or who, uh, that I'm coming to, a small man is coming to debate him. Have you, well, I'm very surprised you can talk like that. Just raise the issues. <laughs> the issues are, I think, when I came here, I thought we were coming to discuss and look at what is the implication of a chief justice of a republic like Kenya yeah. talking at the president, uh, engaging in what Jeff calls outbursts. And we, de we, we distill the issues without bothering whether one man is, is small or big in body, in size, in education, in, or doing communication. I think one or, man is down. It's Professor Manjura is down. Uh, Jeff, when I please said, take listen, charge of this discussion. Listen, that, listen, that discuss serious matters. Listen, Harvey. Listen, I'm the one speaking. You'll take it. Your chance will come. When I said small, it, with, it is within the political matrix of this country. When people are talking about impeachment, when LSK comes in, I'm seeing them as a small player. That's what I meant. I have nothing about Harvey being small or big. That, that's, that, that's not how I operate myself. Yeah. I'm looking at if it is an impeachment, it is coming from serious players within the political matrix. In that matrix, in that arrangement, if LSK is making itself a player, it is certainly a small player. Player, that's what I mean. You get it? How far can it push to have a president impeached? It is playing what we used to call tennis ball. 
when men are playing football in the pitch, that's how they are small. That, no, not, not in the sense in which Harvey thinks I'm saying he's small. I can't. I never talk like that. Those who know me will tell you, Harvey, I don't talk like that. I don't underwrite anybody. Okay. I, I'm intelligent enough to know. <laughs> People know things, and you don't need to be a lawyer to know things, Harvey. Okay. Um, yeah. Enough of tennis balls and footballs and rats and elephants. Let's now let's go to the issues. Okay, <laughs> let's go to the issues. The issues, the real issues. Yes. Ask Harvey the real issues and let me respond. Then ask me issues, let him respond. Okay, that Harvey, we shall Harvey go let well. me ask you this issue. Um, you said you're going to issue charges yes, yes. against the AG and the Solicitor General and you need a response, demanding a response in seven days. What exactly are the charges? The charges border on misconduct, subversion of the rule of law, and failure to uphold the Constitution, and misadvising the President of the Republic of Kenya. These are very grave charges. And this is not the first time that uh, a venge of this kind has been undertaken in the legal fraternity worldwide. There are many of uh, attorney generals who have been removed from the membership of their bar associations for reasons of this kind. And it is important because it must be understood that the Attorney General, though an appointee of the President of the Republic of Kenya, is an independent office holder. It is incumbent upon him to give the best advice to the President and the Executive. Because if he doesn't do that, and the affairs of government are not run properly, then he holds the highest responsibility for that shortcoming. Okay, what if and he in this particular yeah. case, we have ascertained, mm. we have ascertained without uh, any contradiction. What happens Mr. if he doesn't Paul, respond? The admission by the yeah. Attorney General himself on the 10th of June mm. that he's the one misadvising the President of the Republic. Okay, of Nelson, what if he doesn't respond in those seven days? Then what? I mean, it will be back and forth, back and forth? No, it is not a matter of back and forth. The Law Society of Kenya Act has set up a very elaborate mechanism for the removal of a member from the register. The member is entitled to be given the charges against him or her. He's obliged to respond to those charges. And if he doesn't respond to those charges, a trial will be conducted by the members of the law society, his peers. And if they are satisfied that the charges brought forth are sufficient to warrant his removal from the register of members, he will be removed. But if they are not satisfied, with the charges that have been brought forth, then the charges will be dismissed. Okay, what is the anxiety? Me, okay, let Just me ask you this. wait for that process to be completed. Okay, let me ask you this, Nelson. There's so many problems plaguing ordinary Wananchi out there to do with the legal system. And then some critics say, here you are, Nelson, you're playing to the gallery. What do you say? We're just seeking political points. <laughs> Now, uh, Jeff, uh, let me point out some of them afflicting the, the, the common Wananchi. Who is the main cause of this problem? Look, right now, the biggest problem is police brutality. Disobedience of court orders. There are many individuals who have decrees against the government of Kenya. They are not able to get payment. And if they can't get payment, they're not able to continue with their business. And without business, there is no commerce in the country. Look at the people that have been maimed by the police. Look at the people that have been killed by the police. Look at the businesses that have been destroyed by the police. Is it the responsibility of society of Kenya to ensure that those problems are there? <clears throat> Look, whoever takes office, and all these individuals we're talking about in uh, higher offices in the Republic of Kenya, swore to rule or govern in accordance with the Constitution. They swore to uphold the rule of law and constitutionalism. They said, so help me God. They are answerable, therefore, to the people of Kenya and to God. And when we call them to account, they must be accountable. They must not point out and say, look, there is a backlog in the judiciary. The proceedings cannot be ready for us to file an appeal in the Court of Appeal. Can you really countenance such a statement from the Attorney General of Kenya? 
The Attorney General of Kenya is telling you he has not been able to file an appeal against the decision directing the swearing in of the judges since 6th of February, the Attorney General. Let me take you back. Let's deal with the issues. You On are the 25th too far, of I mean, October Jeff. 2017, no, Jeff. when the High Court uh, Justice Odunga made a decision impacting on the election, the Court of Appeal was constituted within a record four hours and they were able to see it. So the responsibility of ensuring that the wheels of justice move smoothly is not one that is limited to the, to the Chief Justice. It's a shared responsibility. Mm. The Judiciary Fund must be available. Court orders must be obeyed. The executive and the legislature must, in, must, must respect the independence of the judiciary, much as the judiciary is supposed to be accountable. But it must also be understood that the accountability of judicial officers is well provided for through the Judicial Service Commission Act, through the Constitution. It is not the responsibility of the executive to say, we suspect this judge is tainted in this aspect, we suspect this magistrate is tainted in this aspect, we suspect that this advocate is tainted. For that reason, we will not accept to swear him or her in. No, it doesn't belong to you. Okay, Herman, and if you really had any evidence of this kind, mm. it is evident that ought to have been brought at the interview stage, not to be brought now. Okay, obviously, Herman, there's some, there's some disarray, there's some tussle, there's some back and forth between the, these two arms of government, the executive and the judiciary. You see, you see, Jeff, before we get there, you know, there are simple things that must be handled in a very simple way. You asked Harvey about their role in the misadministration of justice, taking on so many cases, asking and seeking adjournment after adjournment, and many Kenyans are languishing in jail and remand homes, cases taking tens of years. He's, he's bringing in other issues. They may be important, but the issue you are raising is much more important, according to me. Kenyans are also concerned, for example, that lawyers are the ones protecting the thieves who steal billions of our shillings. So a guy steals billions, and even a common man will tell you this man should be jailed tomorrow. But you see all the top lawyers defending that man. We are not saying they should not defend. These are the kind of things that people are wrestling with. So instead of handling things in a simple way, he's jumping all over. Like I told him about the Attorney General and the Solicitor General. Hmm. The, 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 the solicitor and the attorney general. You know, if those charges are as Harvey puts them, they are so serious and so grave, you cannot handle them at the level of LSK disciplinary. These charges are serious enough for Harvey to advise and to push to have the attorney general, you know, impeached by parliament. You, you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. So these really are people who don't seem to understand what they are supposed to be doing. In terms of the tussle between the Chief Justice and the President, let, let's start from a very plain and simple point. The three arms of government, the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary, must work together. Independence is not absolute. Number two, the people of the Republic of Kenya, in their own wisdom, you can say, or lack of their, their <laughs> or lack of that <laughs> wisdom, decided they will give the power to run this country to one individual. For the time being, that one individual is Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta. Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta is not running the government of the Republic of Kenya together with the judiciary and the legislature. That is a fact. The three arms of government, you are talking about a bureaucracy that is government. The president and his ministers forming the executive and the people who work under them. Together now you are looking at them together with the judiciary and parliament. But there is a higher man up there, Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, as the head of state. So these people are not playing at the same level. Respect must be mutual between the Chief Justice and the President. Mm. You get it? And the Kenyans are not happy that it can get to a point where one of them is pointing at the other. Well, Even, everyone, everyone seems to be pointing fingers at everyone. That's not what Kenyans expect of these of, of bearers. And that's what we expect the LSK in its role to do. 
When the Chief Justice has gone on the steps of the, 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 the Supreme Court of Judiciary and addressed the President in the manner he addressed the President, we expect the LSK to sit down with the Chief Justice and tell them the issues that you are raising are, raising are serious issues. But the manner in which you are addressing the President is not right. Okay, Herman, real quick, you are calling for the Chief Justice to resign. So why not resign if he's so frustrated? Yes, what I'm saying... He has less than a year in office before he retires. Why should he resign? The purpose of resigning is this. If things are as bad as the Chief Justice is saying they are bad, if the President is standing in the way of the Chief Justice, in the manner in which the, the, the Chief Justice and I think with the support of LSK are saying, it is so serious that according to me, the only way is, no, is, is to resign so that you are not occupying an office that is not serving the people of Kenya because the president has made it impossible for you to work. You step aside, you resign. And the people of Kenya will tell the president, what is it you are doing? This is wrong. Mm. Before we get the next chief justice, we will expect the president to have known he was wrong. But then, wait a moment. Where is the president wrong? By not appointing 41 judges? It, it's an issue you can interrogate either way. It's not a question of some scholars de defending government or what. No, Harvey. Okay. It's a question of people looking at things differently. Nelson Harvey? I can look Chief at Justice, it differently. To resign or not to resign? Would I say, Jeff, the diary of Kwamba, Professor Manyora, Haelewi Mambo, and I have said, when did you get to Swahili? Pengina at Elewa. Why did you get to Mwalimu Julius Nyerere aliyesema kwamba huwezi kuchukua mwanabondia wa heavyweight alumbane na mwanabondia wa, wa, wa featherweight. Huyu jamaa Profesa Manyora ni, ni mwanabondia wa featherweight. Haiwelewi mambo yote ya kisheria. Anyway, wacha nirudie kwa Kiingereza. Endelea tu, endelea tu. Profesa Manyora <laughs> Profesa Manyora claims that the chief justice should resign. You see, in a contest of this kind, the laws of power suggest that you do the opposite of what your enemy wants. The administration wants the chief justice to resign. The chief justice is an accomplished lawyer. He knows what he's supposed to be doing. He's taken an oath to perform a particular function. Why would he resign? Why would if, you call if, the chief justice an enemy? Why would think, you call him an enemy? Do you of... think his successor will, will, will be given more respect than himself? No, the Chief Justice should not resign. And let me guarantee you, my Lord Chief Justice David Maraga, you have the full support of the people of Kenya, not just advocates, but everybody in the hamlet. In fact, my carpenter called me in the morning and told me, look, Harvey, you must stand firm and protect the institution of the judiciary. You must come to the defense of the, of the judiciary, and the Chief Justice in particular. Because if there is a problem, it's a problem that must be resolved. And what are we told? We are told that the Chief Justice has not made an effort to contact the President. Who is the bigger man here, using uh, Professor Manyora's word? Is it not the President? The President should say, uh, uh, David Baraka, could you please come to State House tomorrow? You think the Chief Justice will refuse to go there? If the president calls me now and say, go to come to the state house, we need to discuss matters, I'll throw away this microphone and go. Because hmm. I acknowledge that he's the head of state and government. He's somebody that must be respected. But what the attorney general is doing is wrong. In fact, if I were the attorney general, I will drive from state law office, go to the Supreme Court and tell my Lord, the Chief Justice, please, can you jump into the car? We need to go to state house and see the president and look at the evidence that he has as a team whether the evidence is of significance to the serious enterprise. And I believe as day succeeds night, the Chief Justice will be amenable to such a cause. Okay. And I can tell you without any fear of contradiction, even on my part, I called the Attorney General on the 20th of April. I called the Solicitor General on the same day, and they agreed to meet up with me. When we set up the meeting, what did they do? They sent subordinates who had no authority to deliberate on the matter. So if you needed any collaboration that what the Chief Justice is saying is factual and correct, then you have the collaboration from myself. Okay. We're and let's take, not well, yeah, deviate let's take, from the real issue here, Jeff. Yes. 
Yeah. Before you do that, Courts before you do that. Courts of law have been yeah. there from the time of Moses. I know that. Okay, real quick. We're going to take a break, and, come and, back and, and talk who about... tells you that they before can the break, government Jeff, without hold on, the court hold on. of Jeff, law, before the break... We need that, to talk that, about that the gains made by the judiciary Jeff, Jeff, in, before in the short the break, time. Yeah, what, what's up, Professor? Jeff, before the break, you know, some things might go and, and... You know, when you say the chief justice is resigning, he's not surrendering. He's not yielding. He's making a statement. Have, th th that professor da really doesn't know what he's talking about. Listen, Next time, bring a lawyer. L L no, listen, lawyer. Uh, Harvey. Don't or keep talking about... if you're bringing a political uh, scientist, Harvey. bring somebody Harvey. with a wherewithal Harvey. to handle matters uh, of great national Jeff, importance. Jeff. Clearly, you don't Jeff. think he's uh, in, your, Jeff. in your weight group or in your category, Jeff. Harvey. Jeff, we no, are not this is a heavy. We are not here talking about. Champion. You are subjecting him to a battle with a, no, a, a listen, featherweight. Listen, Jeff. To use Nyerere's word, that is murder. Go Jeff, on, go on, Manyara. Uh, Jeff, in, let me say. In this. fact, I'm sympathizing with the poor Jeff, professor. Jeff, go on, prof. Intelligent people don't talk the way Harvey is talking. <laughs> you just make your point, and people are watching TV. They will see what you are saying. You don't keep referring to people heavyweight, but you know people are watching and they are making judgment. They are seeing who between us is making sense. There are some people who will agree with what I'm saying, other people will agree with what you are saying. Some people will dismiss you, others will dismiss me, but then we are just having a debate. Mm -hmm. It's not a question of a highway. And there's something wrong with something funny with lawyers. They think there's something special about law. <laughs> law is just common sense and English. It's nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> what I was saying, common Jeff, sense yes. English. I wanted to make very this point tricky, before yeah? we go for break. Go on. The point I'm making is a very simple point. That if you are being pushed to a point where you are not working, I have read repeatedly the resignation letter from Jaramogi Oginga Odinga. When he tells Kenyatta, there's nothing I'm doing in this office. This office is supposed to have somebody serving the people of Kenya because I earn money from this office of vice president. To the extent that you are not giving me anything to do, you are not supporting me, I resign. When you resign, you make a statement, not because you are weak. Okay, we've heard you. And the take... president will think twice before he interferes. In the event he's interfering, right. we are yet to interrogate, Jeff, whether indeed it is true there's something wrong the president has done. That we have not. Those are the issues I want the heavyweight to talk about. Okay. I'll be watching from my corners live to it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that after the break. And also, the gains of the judiciary in the last few years, Nelson, you know, there's a huge backlog of cases. Let's face it. And it's going to be even worse, made worse by COVID-19. Huge backlog. And also, ICT, you know, you have to adopt to the new normal. Are you guys doing that going forward? Let's talk about that after the break. My goodness. Heavyweight, featherweight, all kinds of weights. <laughs> Keep tweeting <laughs> at Koinanga Jeff at Citizen TV. Can you the hashtag? It's JK Live. JK Live takes a break. We'll be back in a moment.